Regan Di won a split decision win, which he truly deserved because, man, he been through so much. I, I, you know, boxing did him dirty. As y'all see his signature right there, Regan Di. Mm -hmm. When you're a real one, you know the real ones going to recognize you. So I appreciate Guillermo Regan Di for the signature and the uh, autograph on the glove. Uh, however, speaking of his performance, you know, mm. Remember in the first round, <laughs> we I were do so mad. I do remember. I, I was do so remember. mad. Yeah. I'm like, why is he sitting in the pocket, not doing a damn thing? And you pointed out he's just leaning on his front foot. And I'm like, what is he doing? You told me his legs was gone. Well, I told yeah. you, I don't care about him moving like, you know, flying like a butterfly, stinging like a bee, like Muhammad Ali. I'm not asking him to do all of that. All I'm asking him to do is fight his fight. Quit trying to please the fans that never gave a damn. Mm -hmm. Fight your fight at 40. You cannot learn new tricks. You cannot teach an old, old dog new tricks. So stick with what you do best, and that's boxing. Just move around, take angles, and counter him and make him gunshot. And he realized and knew what's up because after the first round, after he got touched and even wobbled at one point because his opponent was a good fighter, mm -hmm. um, you know, he realized, you know what? Let me fight my fight instead of pleasing the fans that never gave a damn. So he started boxing and then he had um, automatically his opponent second guessing himself. Yeah. And Regan Diaw, man, he used never miss a beat, man. Hit man, man. I remember Mayweather one time said, if you if you make a mistake, you have to pay. With Regan Diaw, you didn't even have to make a mistake. You could punch correctly. You could have your hand in the right place placement and everything. Fundamentally, you 100% there and still get countered. You don't even have to make mistake. If you let your hands go, you will get hit. That's how sharp Regan Diaw was at one point. That's why I say he is shelling himself. But... You know, he still, with what he had, with his experience, he pulled off the win against a veteran opponent. And, man, I'm so happy for him because, like I said, boxing did, did him dirty. They allowed all these fighters to avoid him. Uh, Bob Arum shit on him. His own promoter, excuse my language, but I just have to tell it like it is. You know, he messed up his ca cash cow donaire. And that was all she wrote. So that being said, Donaire at the time, of course, just to point it out, a, Max Kellerman like said, if, Max Kellerman said, if he in the same weight division as Mayweather, he will be favored. And then Regan Dia came on and, and beat him like he was a nobody. So speaking of Regan Dia last performance, sum her up what took place in that fight from your perspective and you know your comment on how Regan Dia was mistreated in the sport of boxing. Yeah, I'll I'll kind of end on on that on that note. But one thing I want to say, I, I want to give Regan Dia props for that fight. I, I thought he um, under the circumstances, his age, um, I thought he fought an excellent fight. Because I'm I'm not gonna lie, in the first round, I thought he was a shot fighter. One thing we were talking about, he was um, he was fighting on the inside. He wasn't kind of moving his um, opponent around. He wasn't being clever with his footwork. And not only that, but he was his his weight was over his front foot, so that makes you susceptible to an uppercut. It's just it's just bad technique. And then a couple of times, it seemed that he got his legs stiffened by some really good punches. And I thought those were signs of a shot fighter. And I was it was for me it was kind of a sad moment. Yeah. And then something I don't know if it was a corner, but something just clicked in him. And even though it, this this wasn't a a young rigging the out, but his um his box acumen and still there. it was still there as far as like so he doesn't have the the quickest feet anymore, but he knows how to get himself in different positions. He understands angles. Anybody? Them, what, them what, beautiful what uppercuts. We can't yeah, yeah. ignore them. I mean, uh, beautiful. His left hand is beautiful. The one thing I've always for uh, as talented a fighter as he is, he really doesn't use his right hand at all. Except to maybe to like kind of prop up his opponent and and doing that left, but he's still a genius fighter in in his own right. And I think that he has a new lease on his boxing life now after that performance. Yeah, and I and we just cannot ignore the bolo punch. That's what they call it in Cuba when Muhammad Ali went there. Um, you know the the legendary Cuban fighter at the heavyweight division at the time showed him the. Uh, uh, the punch that's called the bolo punch, and that's the uppercut. That's like 
It, it, it's you, all you, the way you from bringing Cuba. It, yeah, you bringing, bringing it all, it all the, way the way back from Cuba. From that. <laughs> and he caught my man with it and hurt him with it, man. And the guy, like, he had too much heart because he fell down the rope, you know. And then try to get up right away. Like, bro, you already fell on the rope. You know it's going to be considered a knockdown. Like, why are you even going to get up and get hit again when you were badly hurt? But it's a natural instinct. Yeah, the fighter have too much heart. Yeah. Uh, I got to give him props, but I love what Regan Diaz did. Uh, Cuban fighters, I must point out, they rely a lot on reflexes. So a lot of their technique, you know, is really timing and, you know, upper body movement more so than just, you know, hand speed. They teach you how to move your feet before they teach, teach you how to move your hands. And that's why they have one of the best boxing schools, if not the best in boxing today. Uh, that being said, Regan Dial, like I said, the reason why I say he's been mistreated because the Lomachenko uh, incident, for example, um, which we're going to touch on in a second. Let me just connect to the studio and talk to my uh, key real quick, my brother. Like I said, I just want to finish up with the Lomachenko situation when he fought. Because a lot of people keep, kept coming at me, telling me, man, what are you talking about, Aki? Quit making excuses uh, for Rigandia when he fought Lomachenko. And it's like, I'm not making excuses. I'm just stating the facts. And that was when Lomachenko was at 126. Rigandia was trying his hardest to fight him. And Lomachenko was blaming it on the money. Sometimes he was blaming it on the weight yeah, and stuff and then like he, that. He felt that he wasn't going to get kind of credit for that. Or, or but, but, Lomachenko. but listen, hear, hear me out. Lomachenko, mm -hmm. he, he blamed it on multiple stuff. One day he would say the money. One day he would say this and that. And then um, the, when, when he was at 130, when he moved up, he made Rigan Dia move up two weight divisions, claiming he could no longer make 126. Or whatever the reason might be. Mm -hmm. And now they talking about making Lomachenko versus Inui at 126. I thought, I'm like, what? You just said you can no longer make 126 when you was at 130. But when you at 135, speaking of today, you could still make 126. It's like, it's a slap in the face. And Regan Dial, from what we know, and that's a fact, Regan Dial was inactive. Fighting like one time a year, if, if, even if he was fighting one time a year, that was good. He wasn't even fighting one time a year. Coming yeah. off a fight where he it took him only one round because he got um, his opponent got disqualified for acting like he got hit on the head or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't recall correctly. But the point I'm trying to make, Regan Diaz was 10 years older. Regan Diaz was moving up two weight divisions. He fought at 118, speaking of today, yesterday, and he fought Lomacheca at 130. That's three weight divisions. And at them lower weight divisions, that's a huge jump for a small guy. He came into the fight at 121 last night to show that he really is small 118 pounder. And he fought at 130. So, like I said, I mean, Loma took I mean, advantage. So, yeah, uh, he didn't want to fight at, at 126. The same time, he, he, he had bad promotion throughout his career. We don't... Have, why, why is it bad but, promotion but when he upset like, it? It doesn't have to all be about Loma Chico. So, his, it really... I would like to point at his promoter, and that was Bob Arum at one point. Because even when it came to Donaire, he tried to feed, he tried to feed him to Donaire in particular. But one time after a fight, uh, Bob Arum wasn't particularly happy in how Rigan Diaz uh, fought his opponent, and then he went. So this is this no. is a promoter who has a fighter, and then he went and, and did the interview and said, "I don't know who would want to pay to see this guy fight." And he was like, I don't know how to promote this guy him. Is born. And then he would, and he would, and I'm like, that's your fighter. And like, why would you undermine your own efforts by trashing your own boxer? And I thought that was, I thought that was the equivalent to malpractice. Because look, your 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 job is to promote him, and he's doing the and, opposite, and then of that. you're doing the exact opposite. So I think that goes beyond Lomachenko. I, I think all things considered, oh, no, I'm not were, blaming Lomachenko for that. He took advantage, but all I'm trying to say is. Like what Bob when Bob Aram did that right, it recycles every fans repeat it. I mean when when they criticized mm -hmm. uh, Floyd Mayweather at the time, like Jim Lampley and Larry, they had nothing bad to say about Mayweather, so they'd be like, "Oh, he born." They just throw a statement out there on TV when like million people watching, so of course it get recycled and everybody starts saying it, and it become like, "Oh, like oh." It, that's the first thing they think when they think about that fighter. So when your own promoter say that about you, of course the fans going to come at you and be like, oh, well, Regan Diaz boring. 
and you bash your own fighter instead of promoting him. Meanwhile, with Lomachenko, you see what Bob Arum is doing. He going on and beyond. He giving him a title shot. Even after he loses his second bout, he give him a, another title shot back to back on some Drake ish. Why? Is it because he a fighter on the hopeless and Rigan Diaz is a fighter on the coincidentalist? Because Rigan Diaz at the time upset it down there. So that was his ticket. He hit the lotto. He's that's supposed to be his ticket to to fame. It and is, instead, but, you you but kill him. It is, but like let's talk about Rigan Diaz. Like I, I think we can talk about Rigan Diaz without without Loma. We don't have to because there's no, no, some I, good I, I'm news. I'm replying. I'm replying to the people that said, "Oh man, Lomachenko beat him fair and square." He did not beat him fair and square. How you beat somebody fair and square when they moved up two weight division when they te- ten years older than I know, you? But that that, when, that happened when years they ago. inactive. But I'm saying that's the video I made yesterday. You know, I. A lot yeah. of people watched it, so a lot of some people critique. So I'm responding to those. So I would love to talk to these real people. Um, like I said, yeah, and if this, they want to call said, in, yeah, I want Yeah, literally runs. I, I would not say that. I don't, I don't know if you've really probably boxed or know right. that much, but I, I I wouldn't say that he literally runs. I, I don't think that's so. How is he? I think that look? he sets traps, and then if you and then he he will lay you out and lay you out. But and Muhammad Ali does, does Muhammad Ali run? That person that said that does Muhammad Ali does run Floyd the greatest? Run? A yeah, lot of people say if, Floyd runs. So Some people say Lara to, runs. Yes, you trying to say Muhammad Ali run because he move around and rigging the out. in the Olympics. He used to move and float like a butterfly, like Ali used to. But when he turned pro, he was moving around. Even when he beat Donaire. He only moved around. He did not, you know, um, we have a, a caller, though. Let me pick up. But I appreciate everybody that's calling. Yeah, Iceman calling call through. Because um, I guess he's, he's got an issue. That's, this is probably him. All right. Uh, how you doing, fam? Who this is and where you calling from? Hey, what's going on, man? It's Tunnel Vision representing Connecticut. Tunnel, tunnel Vision, vision. Hey, what's good? What's good with what's you? Let, let, let me see where your hey, Tunnel what? Vision is looking at. All right, man. When it comes to this, when it comes to Rick and Gal, when it comes to uh, the uh, the time frame, ways with top rank, everything you're saying is true. You know what I'm saying? And we have to look at that time frame and be like, yeah, they did him dirty. And Absolutely. HBO also did him dirty. You know what I mean? With the things that they did when it pertains to him. Facts. But after that, after that, I'm going to have to put the brakes on that. Because once he left top rank, he had options. There's things that he could have done. He could have went, he could have signed with Al Heyman. And Lara was telling him, yo, sign with Al Heyman, sign with Al Heyman, sign mm-hmm. with Al Heyman. He was, he was saying the same thing to Gamboa. Yeah. Yo, sign with Al Heyman, sign with Al Heyman. Yeah, yeah Gamboa signed with 50 Cent. Yeah. And these are people, you know, who had basically all the fighters that he wanted to fight. And people actually that would have showed him love and actually would have promoted him as a fighter. But you know, you know that's a fact, though. You know, like that that by Al Heyman yeah. and they, they were trying to sign him because I know people. You know, he, he, he was free, now, right? but but I don't know. He's signed now, right? Yeah, he is signed, he's signed now. With Al Heyman, now why? If, if, if they were sign him now, well, he's basically damaged goods. Why wouldn't they have signed him when he was one of the top fighters in the world? They absolutely like when, they did, when, when when they had the time when they had the time the, the opportunity to sign Manny Pacquiao, they signed Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. You know, they'll sign other people. They don't. If you're a good fighter. They will sign you. They're not. They've never been on this weird thing like other promotional companies are. But, but okay, I have hey, to point out. I have to. I have to point out. What, what What are your thoughts on? You know, like let's say Gary Russell is with Al Heyman, right? And he didn't get the Cruz fight. So no, sometimes you cannot. No, some, he's not with Al Gary Russell is not with he's Al Heyman. Not with, no. Gary, I don't think Gary so. Russell has made. Gary Russell has made multiple interviews where he said that yes. He does business with Al Heyman, but he is not. Okay, that's what I'm Heyman. saying. That's what I'm his, saying. He, he's his, doing his business brothers, with him. His, so his, his, his brothers, his brothers are fighting so, him. Yeah. His so what? I, my point him, is, my point is, listen to me. So the point is. Um, Cruz versus Gary Russell is possible, but it never took place because Al Heyman cannot force Cruz to fight him. Cruz just don't want the smoke. So what I'm saying is, we're rigging the out, regardless if he signed with Al Heyman or not. He was not going to get the Morris of the world, the Quig, the Frampton, because they didn't fight Gary Russell either who does business with Al Heyman. So my point is, rigging the out will have got duck regardless because he was pound for pound one of the best for years and nobody wanted to come see him. 
You know what I mean? So it was. It's not the <laughs> issue at all. So regardless of him even push, push, positioning himself in the right uh, place, he still would not get the fights because they he was that feared. Like he was that good. They they felt like they can't I'm, beat him. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to disagree with that just due to the fact that we used to say the same things about Earl Spence. But what what Earl Spence did was Earl Spence stayed active. Earl Spence kept going because he did things that Gary Russell didn't do. He was in the same position as Gamboa was. Not Gamble as um as Ricky Dia was when all these top guys didn't want to fight him. But unlike Gary Russell, Gary Russell fights once a year and then he usually disappears. And then when it's time for him to fight again, let's say a month, two months, that's when he starts calling out people again and yapping up names. And then he has his fight and then he disappears again. What Earl Spence did was, with being in the same situation, he was at all the fights. He was at Danny Garcia's fights. He was at Porter's fights. He was at Keith Thurman's fights. And then he also stayed active. He yes, fought sir. all these fighters. He fought and, 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 and in fighting all these other fighters, he became more popular and more popular and more popular and he got into the, a, a situation where financially it made no sense yeah. to fight him anymore. I, I get you. I, I see your point that you're coming from. So they they could have did the same thing. Yeah, well, let, let me time he, in real quick. Let me time in real quick. Let me time in real quick. Let me time in real quick to that. I agree with you. You know, sometimes it's on the fighter too, but Errol Spence has the it factor to be a superstar. You're talking about Errol Spence, a guy that could promote himself, that talk English, that speak English, that has the time to grow. Like, you know, he's younger in the game. You're talking about, on the other hand, Regan Dia, he was older. Um, he don't speak English. He really can't promote himself that much. He could rap. Uh, we're going to throw his freestyle real quick later on before we end this round. But what I'm saying is he don't speak English. I mean, Cruz, even at one point, had he said when Dante interviewed him, he said, would you fight Regan Dia for one million? He said, no, two million. So Dante was like, two million? He said, no, three million. So Dante was like, three million and a beer. He was like, yeah, three million and a beer. Like, <laughs> he wants that. So it's like I said, you cannot force fighters to fight at the end of the day. Errol Spence, he has the it factor to become a cash cow. And when he did, now they want to fight him. But not everybody in this Errol Spence, not everybody have the appeal to attract people in a major way. So, yeah, but, um, right, and then one, one thing... Uh, Tunnel vision. I, I I would say that there's some good um, arguments on both sides, uh, but we, we I think we all agree that his first situation really tainted his brand. Um, when so when he did come from top rank, right? So he he wasn't in a position where he had all of this leverage or this capital that he had built up because he had a promoter that was working against him. All right. right. So yeah, but he, and then but yeah, hold on one, one second. One, one, one second, Tony Vision. One second. So I mean, with that said, he did have an opportunity to kind of write that ship. What do you think was his biggest um, mistake after like leaving top rank? And then what what do you think led Sonata, to that? Uh, top I think, I think his I think his I think his biggest mistake mm -hmm. was starting with Rock Nation. Okay. Just due to the fact that. Just, just due to the fact that Rock Nation was uh, an entity that came into the game basically trying to poach all Al Heyman's fighters, and they put themselves into a position where they weren't doing any business with PB, with uh, with Al Heyman, which basically was all the fighters that Rick and Dad would have had to um, to fight. That's the one well wanted to fight. That was number one. But even if he, quote, didn't get those fighters, the other big mistake was he signed with an entity that was working pretty much strictly with HBO. HBO Network that was pissing on him and trashing on trashing him on a consistent basis. Right, I right. think if he had so so I think if he had did something like let's say, you know, sign with Al Heyman, even if he quote didn't get these quote fights, he would have been active. This yeah. is a guy that would have been fighting three, four times a year. He would have been making really good money and, you know, his name would have been built up, I believe, to the point where, yeah, one of these guys would have fought him. You know, yeah, yeah, right. so with that said yeah. they, they, they would have been put in that was his biggest mistake. Signing with Rock Nation yeah, What's the worst thing he could have done. Yeah, appreciate you. That's a great point. Like I said, you know, if you want to succeed in boxing, sign with Al Heyman. That's basically what Tunnel <laughs> Vision is saying. I blame Jay-Z. <laughs> yeah. uh, All right, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, Tunnel Vision. All right, good luck. Yeah, so I agree with Tunnel Vision on that one. I'm going to call everybody right back. But for the meantime... Um, so let's, one let's, thing I wanted to say, because I think we were what was lost in all of this is the fact that Ringdale did win. He has a belt. And whatever it is, we could kind of talk about the missteps. But he did something that, to me, was some of the most exciting news over the weekend. He won another strap at another division but, by a split decision. But what else happened after that? 
He called out and knew he Exactly. Comment below who you thought won the debate. Um, me, Professor Nim, the caller, because I'm, I'm undefeated. I'm what Canelo want to be. It's pound for pound number one on split decision when it comes to debate. That being said, I appreciate all my keys. You know, we're going to put the guns down and the gloves up. Shout out to Regan Dia for winning by split decision, becoming a two-time world champion at two different weight divisions. The Boogeyman. Um, shout out to <laughs> Professor Nim. 3P, uh, baby. And like I said, everybody in the chat, subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumber by the second, don't. And listen to these casual fans um, or a.k.a. decafs, dumbass casual fans, because the casual fan ain't no disrespect. If you're a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is attend the IQ University every Sunday live on Split Decision. And hopefully yeah, one day y'all will graduate from the IQ University. And just like Dante always say, man, we speak the truth and nothing but the truth. We offer the book of the truth on Split Decision. So if you hate to hear the truth, man, you're going to hurt your feelings listening to us and your eardrum might bust. So like I said, man, I appreciate every single one of my IQs. Take us out, Professor Nam, while I keep it rolling.